Antonia, this went two hours, and they're still singing. I, I feel like we need this maybe more than, than any other part, but went two hours, uh, or no, I'm sorry, one hour and 45 minutes. Um, family, I, I have to just start with the family. Our colleague, the Rev, uh, delivered an extraordinary eulogy. We'll, we'll play some of that for our viewers, the Vice President, some extraordinary remarks, but it's always the family that stands there in the moment of the unthinkable and um, sort of brings the house down with their strength and their courage to stand there and talk about what this is like. Your thoughts? Absolutely. You know, this was emotional, I think, from start to finish, from the musical performances, which were incredibly moving, to the speeches that you heard. Um, and, and we had a sense from our reporting of how this was going to all be brought together and handled because they wanted the focus on Tyree Nichols' life. It's a celebration of him. We saw some new photos of him that we hadn't seen before. We saw some of his photography, so much of the life that he lived and the fun that he liked to have when he was skating or hanging out with friends. And, you know, some of that was, you know, material we hadn't seen of him before in recent days. Uh, but anyone who's spent time in a black historic church knows that no matter what, you're always going to get a message. And as I've been talking to people who have surrounded the family in the last couple of days, they wanted to make sure that his life was not lost in vain, that there was a call to action, that people would come and know that supporting Tyree and the family means a lot more than just condolences and well wishes to them, that they want to see forward movement in the form of, in the words of the vice president, you know, the passing of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Uh, Benjamin Crump, the family's attorney, made it very clear that there's now a new standard of the number of days they want to see uh, for these investigations to go by. You know, it needs to be a matter now of days or weeks, not months. You know, he kept repeating 20 days as now the new standard for these investigations if cases like Tyree Nichols happen again. They also are pushing for uh, the end of qualified uh, immunity. They want people to be able to sue police officers directly. And so, you know, the funeral for them had to be so much more than just his memory, so much more than just, you know, saying sorry to the family and that we're here with you. They want his life to take on this national level of meaning. And I think you saw that woven in really delicately throughout the entire ceremony that, you know, he's become a symbol now for people who um, want to push this conversation forward, who are, you know, frustrated after George Floyd and all the protests and the movement that that just seemed to completely fall apart in inaction from our federal government. Uh, you can see the anger, how fed up people are in their faces and their emotions. Um, and all of that was so present right there on the surface throughout a ceremony that was still ultimately about celebrating his life. But um, it's coming at this fascinating time, too, Nicole, where there is this push still on the investigation front, too. And we heard them touch on that as well. It's, they want to see more people charged, and they want to see more people who are on the scene fired. And so it's all those pieces, the local, uh, the state, and the federal elements here. They really want Tyree's life to take on this significance, and they don't want his death to end in vain. Antonia, his, his mom, um, who... Um, you know, I think found, mustered the courage to, to speak and on this unthinkably difficult and sad day for her. Um, this is her boy. Um, lots of other, her, her husband and, and others talked about Tyree as her baby. Um, she, she, she cited and thanked the DA, the chief of police. Um, she, she called out the state. But, but I, I, I hear in her also, you know, don't stop right? Get to the bottom of this. T tell me what the feeling and what the talk on the ground is about where the end of this lies. You know, those emotions are complicated, Nicole, because there is this gratitude toward the DA, DA Mulroy, toward the chief of police, uh, Davis, and people give them credit here on the ground for the pace of this investigation, for their transparency, their willingness to answer questions from reporters. But there's also from everyone that I talked to close to the family or, you know, just there in support of the family, this gnawing feeling that they're still going to find out more. And I think a good example of that is some of our new reporting at NBC. We got copies of these five police officers' uh, records, and four of the five have histories of infractions, and they range from, you know, not 
filling out paperwork, important paperwork properly, to use of force issues, to one of the examples that stood out to me, you know, as just one of those moments where you're thinking to yourself, oh, you can't make this up, Nicole, is that one of the five officers was put on leave for two days and had to go to a remedial driving school because they drove so recklessly they caused a three car crash as they were headed to a scene one night. And you remember the poll, you know, apparently precipitating action before this stop was that Tyree Nichols had driven recklessly. We have no evidence that that happened, but that was the allegation. And so when you learn that about these officers and you recognize that there's more history here, there's a developing story around their record uh, that the police chief and others must have known that they had some of these issues in their past. How did they get put on a Scorpion unit? How were they placed on an elite police force, a task force uh, like the ones that we see across the, com the country that are meant to do some of the most important crime reduction strategies and work here? You know, and so when you see that and these additional stories come out, you know, Dion Hampton reporting just the other day that, they, that some of these officers had been in incredibly violent incidents with other community members in the past. As we find more out, I think that we're going to see additional questions. And that's why the family is leaving the door open and the push open for whatever additional names come out, what other people we find out may have been on the scene or involved in the police report that they said was false, a, a false picture painted of their son initially they are going to be calling for those people to be held accountable, whether that's through firings and administrative changes or that's through additional charges, Nicole. The, the Rev picked up on this message as well, um, Antonia. Let me play some of that for our viewers. In the city that Dr. King lost his life, not far away from that balcony, you beat a brother to death. There's nothing more insulting and offensive to those of us that fight to open doors that you walk through those doors and act like the folks we had to fight for to get you through them doors. You didn't get on the police department by yourself. The police chief didn't get there by herself. People had to march and go to jail and some lost their lives to open the doors for you. And how dare you? Act like that sacrifice was enough for nothing. You ain't in no New England state, you in Tennessee. Yeah. Where we had to fight for you. Yeah. Yeah. And you take that position. I want to bring David Henderson into our coverage. Um, David, the, the Rev, as he started to do on Friday when we were around this table, um, very much going there, speaking to something Antonia has talked about since the earliest hours after the details of this tragedy were known. Absolutely. And Nicole, here's the thing. You can't start off with a clip from Sam Cooke, a rendition of his song, A Change Is Gonna Come and Expect From My Mind to not immediately go there because yeah. it balances out exactly what we're talking about here. Also, a Tyree's mom expressing hope and optimism as a civil rights advocate. I have to use that to tell myself I have no excuse not to be optimistic. But also part of what we have to do here is relieve the family of the burden of objectivity that the rest of us need to maintain. Because the truth is the response that we've received from Memphis Police Department has been woefully inadequate. If you look at the totality of what it is that they are saying. So you have this unit that you mm. sent out to do an aggressive form of policing that was violent and there's pride indication that you knew that the people who ultimately beat Tyree to death were violent. I have worked on every type of violent crime there is. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I've never seen a situation where someone did something this bad and there wasn't a prior history. And if anyone questions that, just look at the fact that you beat a young man to death on camera and you knew you were on camera and you're part of high level investigation. So the question should be, why would you ever do something that stupid? And the answer is, because you've done comparable things before and you've gotten away with it. This brings us back to the Minneapolis, the Memphis, excuse me, police department, because they're still maintaining the position, hey, 
These officers don't represent the totality of our police department, but the reporting indicates that there are somewhere between 30 and 40 members of the Scorpion unit. Six members of that unit, which makes up 20 percent of that unit, were involved with beating a young man to death. And you still want to admit that you've got a systemic problem in your police department and your solution was to take the remainder of that deck, the remaining 80% and treat it like a deck of cards, shuffling it back into the remainder of your police department. And you have the nerve to suggest that that is progress. At the very least, we should have seen an internal audit of the Scorpion unit before it was disbanded.